Welcome to AP Biology. Today I want to go over some complex interactions. And so this video isn't going over anything that's more complex in terms of like harder for you to understand. It's just that sometimes the relationship between your phenotype and your genotype isn't super um, easy to predict. Um, or sometimes it's not just like one gene causes one trait. So um, like the opposite of this would be blood type. So for example, I have type A blood and that's because my genotype is heterozygous for type A, and so I have type A blood, and that's kind of what it affects. There are other interactions, though, that um, are a little bit more complex than that. So, for example, pleiotropy is when one mutation or one gene um, affects many different traits, and then sort of um, almost the opposite of that is that you can have many different genes that affect one trait, and an example of that is epistasis. So polygenic inheritance is one thing that we've talked about a little bit already. Epistasis is an example of polygenic inheritance. So let's start by talking about pleiotropy. Pleiotropy occurs when a single gene influences many traits. So a mutation in that gene can have many different effects. So the underlying mechanism is that the gene codes for a protein, right? You know how DNA codes for RNA. And if that is messenger RNA, then that's going to affect um, a protein. So DNA codes for RNA usually codes for a protein. And if there's a mutation in that DNA, you're going to end up probably uh, or possibly with a protein that is folded the wrong way, may not work or may not work as well as it, it should have. You know, sometimes it's a great mutation, but a lot of times it's a mutation that causes the um, final product to um, not function. And so that can be a problem. So if that protein is used by um, a lot of different cells, maybe it's an enzyme that's needed for a lot of different cells, or maybe it's a signal that affects a lot of different cells, that can be a problem. So an example is PKU, phenylketonuria. I think I'm saying that right. Um, it's caused by a mutation in a single gene that codes for an enzyme. DNA codes for RNA, codes for protein. That protein might be an enzyme. The enzyme in this case is phenylalanine hydroxylase. ACE, ACE, it's an enzyme, it converts a particular amino acid, phenylalanine, to tyrosine. Um, so that's the normal thing that it should do if that enzyme isn't working um, or isn't working very well. You build up too much phenylalanine, which is a problem. So too much phenylalanine can cause mental retardation, it can cause reduced hair, and it can cause um, issues with skin pigmentation. And you would think those are very different things, but it's this one gene, um, this one gene product that affects all of this different stuff. Um, okay, totally a uh, different topic now, um, polygenic inheritance. This is also a more complex interaction, right? So anytime you see a trait that has lots and lots of variation, it's probably polygenic. So for example, eye color, there's, you know, there's blue eyes and green eyes and brown eyes and, and gray eyes. And um, anyway, there's a lot of different shades of brown, right? A lot of different shades of blue, lots of different shades of green or hazel. And then there's like some even cooler stuff, right? Um, like gray eyes or um, uh, sort of like yellowish eyes, like brownish yellowish eyes. So the inheritance of a trait that's caused by two or more genes is called polygenic inheritance. Um, and here's another example. If you have lots of lots of different um, variations, then um, it's probably polygenic, like not just one thing or the other thing. So when Mendel studied peas, um, there were short peas and there were tall peas, and there was no variation in between. There were no medium or medium talls. Um, with something like skin color, lots and lots of variation from very light to very dark and everybody in between. Um, so that's probably polygenic anytime you have a trait like that. Um, where you can have, like, this is only showing three different genes, right, with someone who's heterozygous. You can have, like, I think I think for skin color, there's like eight or nine genes that code for um, skin color. So this is all the variations just with someone, who, uh, two parents who are heterozygous for just three traits. Okay, so epistasis is an example of um, polygenic inheritance. So in epistasis, a gene at one locus, one location, um, alters the phenotypic expression of a gene at a second locus, and um, some unexpected phenotypes can occur. So, for example, in many ma mammals, fur color depends on two genes. One determines the pigment, whether you're going to be brown or black, and the other determines whether you get to have that color at all. So let's say big B codes for black fur and little b codes for brown fur. And big C says, yeah, you get to have some color, kind of color. And little c 
says you're going to be, um, like in mice, it might be saying, hey, you're going to be albino. In these dogs, it says you're going to be yellow. So as in not not the darker brown or brown, uh, brown or black. Okay, so let's say you have parents who are heterozygous for both traits. We've done these these uh, crosses before. If you're heterozygous for two traits, mated with someone who's heterozygous for two traits, you are supposed to get a nine to three to three to one ratio. So nine who are dominant, whoops, we're doing Bs, who are dominant uh, for both, three who are dominant for one, but wow, I failed here. That was supposed to be, um, I think I have Bs first. Let's do the Bs first. Here's supposed to be an E. That is supposed to be a B. Um, kind of don't like that one. Okay, let's try this again. Whoops. Okay, so nine who are dominant for both traits, three who are dominant for one trait but not the other, three who are dominant, whoops, three who are dominant for like the second one, but not the first one, and one who is um, recessive for everything. So you should have four different phenotypes and they should be in the ratio of nine to three to three to one. And that is not what we get here. We get uh, nine, like we thought, who are um, dominant for, well, who are one phenotype, right? So, so far so good. And three who are, um, I guess dominant for the other one. And then, but we don't get the nine to three to three to one ratio. We get a nine to three to four ratio. So the, the E here is more important than the B. So what that's saying is anyone who's little E, little E, I don't care what the Bs are. Anyone who's little E, little E is gonna be yellow or if it's mice albino. Um, so it's sort of like these three and the one are combined to make this one. So that's something unexpected. That's epistasis. It doesn't always show up this way, um, but that's just one way. You're going to get a different ratio than you expect.